Oh, hello there, you surprised me. Well, welcome to Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, while you're here, I figure I might as well teach you a little bit about the geology. Um, I think the first part in understanding this amazing landscape and how these mountains form is first off to understand where this rock came from. Where did the rock that makes up those beautiful mountain peaks come from? Where did the rock that makes up all those boulders in the background, where did it all come from? Well, to understand that, we need to look at it closely. We need to make some observations. If we look closely, we can see that, the, that this rock has a very interesting texture. There are visible crystals. There are alternating bands of light crystals grouped together and dark crystals grouped together. And these bands have a folded uh, structure to them. Well, all of these clues tell us that this rock is a rock type called nice, not nice with an N, nice with a G, and that it is a metamorphic rock. Well, if you remember, metamorphic rocks are rocks that have been altered or changed due to intense heat and pressure. So we can kind of get the, that clue just from looking at the, the folded structure that this rock has been deformed and altered. Um, so this, this texture that we see, the alternating light and dark bands, that is what we call foliation. Foliation is a texture that describes the way that minerals have organized through metamorphosis. Okay? So the texture that we are seeing here is called a nisic texture, the alternating light and dark bands. There are other textures as well. There are slaty textures where the minerals align to form sheets, and there are schistose uh, textures where once again the minerals form sheets but the, the crystals are much larger with that texture. Okay? Uh, nice is a high grade metamorphic rock which means that it has undergone more extreme conditions than metamorphic rocks such as slate or schist. So let's talk a little bit about how this rock metamorphosed, how it came to be. Well, since it's a metamorphic rock, that means it has some sort of parent rock or protolith where it came from. In this case, the protolith for the rocks we see behind me was actually marine sedimentary rock. This rock started out as sedimentary layers deposited in an ocean basin. That's quite unusual because now I'm at over 10,000 feet, basically on top of a mountain, and the rock looks much different. Well, something happened, something occurred to cause a drastic change within this rock. And that something was tectonic convergence. So if we start our, our timeline around two billion years ago, this area was underwater. It was in the ocean. You had marine sediments accumulating. Shortly after, well, relatively, <laughs> at about 1.7 billion years ago, tectonic convergence began, and you basically had paleo micro North American continents and you had another micro continents and the two converged. As these two continents converged they connected or sutured together and this zone where the two continents connected together guess what there was a lot of heat and a lot of pressure at that margin between these two smaller continents and they connected together to form a larger continent. That's basically how North America formed is piece by piece as little microcontinents accreted on. Well, during this accretion at about 1.7 billion years ago, like I said, there was a lot of heat and a lot of pressure, and this marine sedimentary rock, it became altered and deformed and turned into this gneiss that we see around me and on the mountain peaks and in the boulders. Okay, so that's how this rock formed. Well, the next step that you're probably wondering is, okay, you had tectonic convergence, metamorphosis typically occurs, almost always occurs really deep in the subsurface, which was the case here. How did these rocks go from really being really deep underground to now being at the tops of mountains that are over 12,000 feet above sea level? Well, you've probably guessed it. It's once again through another episode of tectonic convergence. This later episode of convergence occurred starting around 70 million years ago uh, where you had a subducting plate that basically subducted beneath uh, what is now California. 
This subduction created convergence within the interior of the continents. This convergence ca caused the, the lithosphere to shorten and thicken, and this led to mountains forming, the Rocky Mountains, hence Rocky Mountain National Park. So these metamorphic rocks that were formed very deep underground during this um, episode of, of uplift that started around 70 million years ago caused these rocks to rise up, where then erosion could expose them. And here at Rocky Mountain National Park, one of the most important agents of erosion was glaciers. Well, you can see a little bit of snow behind me. Those are snow fields. Those will likely melt by the end of the summer. Uh, glaciers are long-term accumulations of ice that actually slide and move. So those are not glaciers, those are just snow fields. But if we turn back the clock about 15 to 20,000 years ago, uh, there was an ice age and there were permanent glaciers in this area that could uh, very powerfully, slowly but powerfully carve this landscape behind me. So if you look behind me, you see mountain peaks with this bowl shaped valley. That is a glacial cirque. Basically glaciers carved out um, a gouge in the mountainside to create that bowl shaped feature and better expose this wonderful and beautiful gneiss and create this landscape and also cause a depression where water can fill and create this beautiful alpine lake. So that's a little bit about um, the formation of these features we see at Rocky Mountain National Park. Hopefully with that you have a better understanding of how metamorphic rocks form and how mountains form. Thanks for coming.